Hi everybody, Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this really gorgeous card that I created. This is kind of a copy off of something that was in the annual catalog. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they actually did theirs on a pizza box. And what they did was they stamped these little leaf images, which are from the Humming Along stamp set. And to me, I just guessed my best guesstimation, it looks like they stamped them in Bermuda Bay and Old Olive. So that's the theme I went with. Now, I did these with colored pencils. So as you can see, they're colored in with colored pencils. And then I used a blender pen to kind of blend the inks. So the colored pencils, they are in this watercolor pencil box. So I used Bermuda Bay an old olive. And since I was thinking about it, I kind of thought when I made this version, I would make a little bit different because you could also use, if you wanted to, the Stampin' Blends. Now, I don't know exactly how these would color in differently, but we'll give it a shot. What we'll maybe do is like do a few of these as highlights. And what I did was I stamped the uh, leaf images in two different stamps. Now, I did make them lighter so that they would be very easy to color in darker. So you could go with the traditional colors of stamping them in Old Olive and Bermuda Bay, and then basically you're just gonna take the two coordinating pencils out and color it in with Old Olive and Bermuda Bay respectively. Or if you wanted to do something a little lighter so you kind of lost the lines, you could go with a lighter shade. You could stamp it in Pear Pizzazz and Coastal Cabana, but then still color it in with Bermuda Bay and Old Olive. But I thought we could also kind of play around with the Stampin' Blends and use those. And then um, another trick that I came up with, so I stamped the, or I shouldn't say stamp, I punched out some of our, I uh, believe it is sparkling glimmer paper. No, there's only one in there. So the sparkling glimmer paper, I punched this out with the, and I'm always calling this the wrong name, but the punch, I think it's a starburst punch. I think I'm calling it sparkle, but it's starburst. So I punched this out with that. And then actually the die cut is from the coordinating framelits. So this is uh, the die cut that we're gonna use. This is the Hummingbird framelits. And I just stamped the thank you um, in the same tone. So this is Bermuda Bay on Bermuda Bay. Actually, this one might be Coastal Cabana. I think I stamped that in Coastal Cabana. But I came up with another idea to use for this because with this glimmer paper here, I wanted to put this up on dimensionals, but it's a little bit hard to stick. So what I did was I actually added a piece of the um, Sizzix adhesive strip to the back of this, and I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so I'll share that with you as well. So what we're going to do to get started... And then also one other thing, if you didn't notice here, I did run this through with the Subtles embossing folder. So it's three layers. This one, the way I put it together, kind of layered up a little differently, but I'm going to give you the exact measurements that we used. So I just have um, some of the adhesive sheet onto this little scrap of Bermuda Bay. I have a piece of Bermuda Bay that is cut at five and a half by eight and a half, and then you're going to score it at four and a quarter. I have another piece of Bermuda Bay that is cut by four and five and a quarter. I have a piece of Whisper White that is cut at three and three quarters by five. I have a scrap of the, I believe it's called Shimmer Glimmer Paper, but I'll put these all in the um, description of the video. So what I'm going to do just for now is I'm going to just punch this out with this punch. So we have that piece ready. So we'll set that on the side and put that away. And I will do the big shot work afterwards as well. So I'm going to just put this all on the side. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our leaf. So I kind of just went with um, alternating the leaf. And again, you could certainly make a very distinct pattern if you wanted to, but I just kind of just took the liberty of, of alternating. So if you are going to color these in with the blends, the one thing is if you use the ink, it can bleed a little bit, but since they're very similar colors, it probably wouldn't matter. Um, you could also stamp it if you wanted to have a little bit more of an edge. You could absolutely use the Memento ink and then color it in with the blends. But I want to kind of stick with the same lightness to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp a couple of these in Pear Pizzazz and then a couple in the Old Olive, and we'll see which one we like better. And then I'll do a couple in the Coastal Cabana and a couple in the Bermuda Bay. And we'll kind of see if we can tell the difference between the two. So this will be a little bit of a work in progress. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the leaf. And I basically kind of just follow the same pattern up. And I'm going to clean this off in between. And then I'm going to go to the lighter shade. So again, this is the Pear Pizzazz. And then these kind of went down. So I kind of had them so they were a little bit 
overlapping, if that makes sense. So same thing again, I'll go with the Coastal Cabana here, and this one I'll put so it's a little bit more off-centered, and then just fill in a little bit up top. And I'm gonna do another one here. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna do this row in Old Olive, and then the next row I'll do in Bermuda Bay, just so we can see, Ooh, this one needs to be re-inked, <laughs> how this looks. Yeah, my Old Olive is clearly in desperate need of re-inking. And so let me close this up. And then I'm going to do the next one in Bermuda Bay. So this is the actual color of what we're using. That one's nice and inky. Okay, and then I'm going to close this up again. So once again, these are the actual colors of the watercolor pencils and the Stampin' Blends that we have. So I'm going to go back to my lighter, which was Pear Pizzazz. And you can certainly um, space these out a little bit more if you want a little bit more white space. It's kind of up to you. And that, and what I'm going to do is, just because, I'm going to just get this little teeny bit down here. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so while I have this out, and again, this is Coastal Cabana, so I'm going to go with the darker color. Just so it shows up. I'm going to stamp the sentiment into that little scrap piece so let's see whoops oh I'm like what did I do with my stamp set okay so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna just do the thank you and only thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that I have this in the area where that paper is and then I kind of stamp in the center so just like that pretty good so let me wipe this off okay so now we're gonna get into actually what these colors look like and then the other thing you can do just keep in mind you could use your blender pens if you wanted to and use uh, the ink for this it you know you really can do it a million different ways so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of them with the green must be stuck in here with the actual colors of the watercolor pencil. So Old Olive and then Bermuda Bay. So what I did was I kind of just started with, again, this is in this is the Pear Pizzazz. The one that was Old Olive was in the middle and needs a little bit of re-inking. So I just took my pencil and kind of lightly colored it in. It doesn't really have to be super dark because you can use, and again, I am on um, regular Whisper White, so I'm not going to use a watercolor or a aqua painter I'm just using my blender pen just to kind of blend the ink a little bit fill that in and then if you want you can go back again with your watercolor pencil and just add some darker spots if you wanted to um, as you can see for this one what I did was I went and outlined them all so you could do that if you wanted to that way you could add in a little bit more of the shading and then go back in with this just kind of bleed it out a little bit. So I'm gonna do two. This was the Pear Pizzazz ink and I'm using the Old Olive watercolor pencil. And I'm gonna just fill these in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the inside ones. And as you can see, I'm not doing a super job coloring only because I don't want this video to be too, too long for you guys. But you can always skip ahead if it's too long. Oops, see, that's the beauty of making sure that you also have a clean pen because there's a little bit of pink there. So I'm gonna make sure I wipe this off. Okay. That's what you want is a little pink in with your green. So what I'll do is I'll just go over that spot a little bit with a little bit darker of the old olive. But on the center ones, what I'll do is I'll use the Stampin' Blends so we can see what the difference is. I'm just going to add a little bit of dark here to kind of cover up that spot I just goofed. So, blend this out. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave those as is. And then you would do the same thing. So again, this is the Bermuda Bay marker. So I'm going to just add 
watercolor pencil. So while I'm coloring, I'll just take a moment to tell you that there are going to be some new celebration items added um, this Friday, which is February the 15th. So there is going to be an embossing folder and a stamp set. Oh, I colored this the wrong one. Darn it. Okay, I'll do this one opposite. Not paying attention. Um, there's a stamp set and a package of DSP that coordinate. That's a hundred dollar purchase. The uh, let me just blend these real quick. Let me make sure this is clean. The stamp set that goes with the DSP is a hundred dollar purchase. The embossing folder is a fifty dollar purchase. And these are only going to be available through March 31st or quite honestly while supplies last. So a lot of times like the ribbon has completely sold out. A lot of times a lot of things do go away. I believe there is a card kit that sold out because it was so popular. So if there's something you want, make sure that you order sooner rather than later. And there is one more thing and I'm trying to think what it is. I feel like it's another stamp set. But anyway, I will put a picture of that on the blog as well. Okay, so I was intending on doing these two center ones with the blends, but I goofed up. So I'm going to do one of them is just a darker ink. But we're going to do both of these with the blend. So I'm going to start with the light blend, and then I'm going to add in the uh, darker blend. So these are this is Old Olive. Let's see what this looks like. Might be kind of neat because it'll be like the center is just a little bit different. So... Do you want to make sure you stay in the lines? Try not to hurry too much because I don't want to make them look terrible. I'm just going to trace this edge. These are kind of nice because you can give that shadowing effect. Kind of add in the veins. Let me go back through with the light and just blend this out a little bit. Add the dark on this one first. Okay, and this one, I'm not sure how much dark I'm going to add to this because this was stamped really, really light. So I don't want it to be too dark. Okay, and what I'm going to do is actually add in the veining with the dark. And follow the point. Actually, that worked out not so bad. But when you bl when you do the blends a little bit at a time, it actually helps them to blend a little bit better. So, so there is the old olive, and then I'll do the Bermuda Bay. And again, I'm going to start with the light because even is this the light? Yeah, the the light Bermuda Bay is still pretty dark. So you still can see the lines of the stamp underneath, which is nice. And again, this will bleed through to the back because of the blends, but quite honestly, we're putting this layer down, so not likely anybody's going to notice. Last one. And I thought this was a really cute project. And even though they had um, they had it stamped on the little pizza box, I thought it would make such a pretty card. There we go. Okay. Okay, so you can see the blends are definitely a little darker. But it kind of looks neat with the different stuff on there. Um, the other thing you can do, which I did on mine as well, is you can always add in a little bit of Wink of Stella. But I definitely like the watercolor pencil look better versus the blends on this because I think that uh, darker blend hides too much of the details. And I like the watercolor because it just gives a really soft 
look to it. Okay, so there, you can decide for yourself which one you really, really like better. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on the side. So as I was saying, you can see this goes through, but it's not that big of a deal because it'll be covered up. So what I'm gonna do is put this over here and we're gonna uh, run the die cut through the embossing, uh, through the big shot. And then we're also gonna emboss this with the subtle folder. So I have my magnetic platform, which, um, whoops, just quickly, I want to tell you, I watched a video and someone gave an, ex an excellent, absolutely excellent tip. And I've been trying to do this from now on. So I have a plate that I'm just using for the top. And what I'm doing is I'm using a plate and if it has any give in it, I'm making sure I'm putting that part down. So that's going to strictly be my cutting base. And then I'm going to have a smoother one for the top. So... I think that was an excellent idea. I cannot remember where I watched that video, but I thought it was really, really smart. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this on top, crank that through. Okay, and then my back piece will already have the uh, adhesive sheet to it. So all we'll do is just peel that off. So we're done with that. So now all I have to do is just emboss this piece. Now when you do, um, the thicker embossing folders, you don't use two plates. You just use the top plate. Okay, so let me just grab that. My apologies. I forgot to grab it ahead of time. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your paper, your cardstock in, and you can go either way. So if you want the lines to be up and down, you can put it in crosswise or vertically, doesn't matter. But when you feed this in, you wanna have the opening going to the machine. Okay, so we're gonna put that here. And in the spirit of keeping with it, I'm gonna just use my banged up plate and I'm just gonna crank this through. And actually, you might not be able to do this with the magnetic plate, now that I think about it, because it is a little bit thicker. So what you wanna do is you wanna use your regular Big Shot platform and no thin die adapter because this um, magnetic platform is just a little bit higher. So we're gonna just use the regular Big Shot platform. Once again, we're gonna put this in and we're gonna have our opening facing in towards the Big Shot where we're running it. Put our cutting pad on top and then crank it through. And I will tell you, with using these dynamic folders, it does still make it feel a little bit tighter, but it turns out really beautifully. It has a super deep etching to it, so definitely worth it. Move this out of the way, and we'll get this all put together. So what I did is I have my base. Just fold this in half. Just reinforce that fold with my bone folder. And then I'm gonna take some liquid glue. And it just depends. So you always have a debossed and an embossed side. So I'm gonna have it so the bumps stick up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue here. You can hear that's like <laughs> ribbed so you can tell what side you're using. I'm gonna just lay this on top. So pretty much lines up with about a quarter inch spacing all the way around. Okay, and then I have my piece. So this is my panel over here. And I think I'm gonna fold this this way, just so a little bit more of this is gonna be covered. Once again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just put some Tombow liquid glue on here. Make sure you get to the edges so the whole thing sticks. And then what I have been doing with this is kind of lay it and I kind of move it a little bit so it gets in the grooves and then just settle on where you want it so it's center, centered. Again, this is a quarter inch smaller, okay? So then I'm gonna put my punched piece down. And as you can see for this, so this is something you can add if you like, there's a little piece of ribbon here. And this is, this is called, I believe it's called flax. Yes, the flax ribbon. So what I did for this, and it's a little hard to see, but I actually trimmed it and I pulled out a couple of the pieces. So it would kind of not be a complete strip, if that makes sense. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I want a piece, we're gonna say, oops. 
about that big. So like that. This ribbon is in the Occasions catalog. This is one of my favorites as well. I really like those wide ribbons. So what I did was I took my scissors and I kind of just cut the ends here just a teeny bit. And I pulled out one of these strings so you can pull, it'll come through. And what I did was I actually used it to tie through on this. And then I pulled out one goes over here. This one was brought out too. That's okay. I'll just pull this second one out. No biggie. So then what I did was I just put a little bit of glue on the back of this. Again, the same thing. Just use the Tombow glue. You could use your sponge technique if you wanted to. And I kind of laid this down about where I wanted it. A little press. I'm going to put this on top. Actually, I think I'll move this up just a smidge. There you go. Give this a little press so it stays. And once the glue dries on this, you won't have any issues with any tackiness or anything. But I used, if I can find them, I believe this is them, the Tropical Elements. So I used one of the little leaves and one of the little hibiscus type flowers which I love these super super cute reminds me of Hawaii so what I did was I put these through the back at least I think that's what I did yeah I put them through the back come on yes I did just lick that ribbon <laughs> and I made sure they were kind of remotely even and then I did the same thing and I just fed them through again. And now I'm just thinking, I know I've seen people before that have said, if you get a card from me, you can expect that I might have licked the ribbon <laughs> that I sent you, which is kind of funny if you think about it. So you can either pull it through again, which is what I did. And then you can kind of leave a loop if you want. So you can kind of leave these so you have these little loops here if you wanted to. So you could pop this one back up a little bit. You'll see what I mean in a second. So if you have a little loop here and then I kind of just put them like spread them like a bow. Just like that. And what I did was, I did two different things. I took a glue dot. Oh, oops, things are falling from the sky. I took a glue dot to the back. I'm just going to pick one up. And I kind of, once I got this how I wanted it with the loops. Oops. So these little loops here, like so. I put this in the back so it would hold it kind of like that and then I trimmed them so they were even just like that with my loops or you could completely just tie this if you wanted to you could close it up straight it just kind of depends on what you want to do you could loop it more than once also if you'd like and then I put a dimensional on the back just to really hold everything in place. And then I put a mini dimensional on the back of this little guy. So put one right up the top. Okay. So then I do have, again, like I said, I put some um, of a adhesive strip on the back of this. Let me see if I can pop this through. So when you pull it off, the whole thing is sticky. So you can see the whole thing is sticky but if you want to add dimensionals to it, you could. You just have to really reinforce them with a little bit of um, Tombow liquid glue because it's sometimes hard to get the stuff to stick to this glimmer paper. And then I added these just with the dimensional again down here and put one up here at the top. I'm gonna spread these out a little bit. I'm actually gonna cross them. But 
okay, aside from that string incident, really not too long. Again, really just depends on what you like. I really, um, really, really like the watercolor pencils. And these do come in the watercolor collection. So this is still available. And where did I leave? move my box? This has some really good colors in it too. Melon Mambo, uh, Rich Razzleberry, Espresso, Black, White. So some great color combinations. And if you wanted to, you could absolutely pick a different color combination too. Even the um, Bermuda Bay and the Coral would look really pretty. Or if you liked it better, you could certainly do this with the Stampin' Blends. But I like the look of the watercolor pencils. I did use the blender pen to blend the pencils out a little bit so they were a little bit softer. But I will put all the measurements again, as I said, and all the products that I used for this in my um, blog post, which is reachthestamper.stampinup. Sorry, that's my store. Reachthestamper.stampinup.net is my online store. Reachthestamper.com is my blog. And this one I did trim. So I had three layers versus this one. These two layers here kind of matched. And then I just have this extra layer above and below. But we did use the subtle folder for both of those. But I really like these colors together. The Old Olive and Bermuda Bay. Or you could use Calypso Coral and Pear Pizzazz. Kind of the same thing with the same color scheme. I think they both look really, really pretty together. So thank you guys very much for taking time to watch. If you have any questions about these cards or any questions at all about Stampin' Up, all you have to do is send me an email at reachthestamper.gmail.com. Thanks for watching.